Hello and welcome to Biology Made Simple with student Dr. Siddiqui. Today we're going to continue our discussion of renal physiology. In the last video we talked about the kidneys and their functional unit, the nephron. Today we're going to take a closer look at the nephron. There is 5 liters of blood circulating in our vascular system each minute. Of the 5 liters, 1 liter is sent to the kidneys. 1 liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. Of the 1,000 milliliters, 400 make up the cells, which are not filtered into the Bowman's capsule. The remaining 600 milliliters make up the plasma. Of the 600 milliliters of plasma, 20% is filtered into the Bowman's capsule. We're going to approximate that as 100 milliliters. Of the 100 milliliters of filtrate, 65 milliliters is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule. 15 milliliters is reabsorbed at the descending loop of Henle, and another 15 milliliters is reabsorbed at the distal convoluted tubule, leaving only 5 milliliters to be excreted as urine. There are many essential substances filtered into the Bowman's capsule that the body needs and reabsorbs through the peritubular cells in the proximal convoluted tubule. These substances are sodium, glucose, amino acids, bicarbonate, water, chloride, and other, and other substances. Some wastes and drugs that are not filtered into the Bowman's capsule are secreted through the peritubular capillaries. Most of the reabsorption and secretion occurs at the proximal convoluted tubule. 65% of water is reabsorbed at the proximal convoluted tubule. Another 20% of water is reabsorbed at the descending loop of Henle. The osmolarity of the filtrate remains constant in the proximal convoluted tubule at 300 milliosmoles. However, as this filtrate enters the descending loop of Henle, its concentration or osmolarity increases because the water is leaving due to the interstitium being highly hyperosmolar. As the water leaves, the concentration of the filtrate the solute concentration increases going all the way up to 1200 milliosmoles. On the distal convoluted tubule we have cells called macula densa and these have, these have mechanoreceptors which detect changes in blood pressure. The macula densa cells work together with juxtaglomerular cells and detect changes in blood pressure and release the hormone called renin. These two cells, the juxtaglomerular cells and the macula densa cells make up the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So let's take a quick overview of the nephron. The proximal convoluted tubule and the descending loop of Henle are always water permeable. The ascending loop of Henle and part of the, the distal convoluted tubule are always water impermeable and the remaining portion of the nephron the permeability depends upon antidiuretic hormone, which we will discuss in the next video, and the regulation of blood pressure by the renal system. Thank you for tuning in. Please like and comment.